So you want to know something crazy? The amount of microplastics that's in a food is not really from the packaging. So like, and, and I'm so glad that people are aware of product packaging and how it can contribute to the amount of microplastics and chemicals from that plastic that are in that food. But it's really a tiny, tiny percentage of the amount of microplastics that would be in a food, right? So milk is a really good example. The majority of those microplastics are from the processing. And this has actually been shown in lots and lots of studies, is that the amount of microplastics and chemicals that any kind of food has it really comes from the amount of processing that it has. So milk is actually pretty processed, if you think about it. It goes from the cow, it then has to be like filtered out, it has to be pasteurized, it has to be stored multiple times. In this specific situation, like moving your milk that you buy at the store to a glass jug when you get home, sure, that will definitely remove some microplastics, but it's going to be a tiny fraction, really, if any at all, versus the amount of microplastics that are already in that milk, which are going to be from the processing, which is why over and over again, I've said in so many of my videos, the main way to avoid microplastics and all the chemicals that come from plastic is to avoid processed food. Like there, on the bar graph, there was a direct line between the amount of processing a food has and the amount of microplastics and chemicals in it. So the less processed a food is, the less microplastics it has. An apple has very, very little microplastics. Applesauce, way more microplastics. Now, if you make that applesauce at home, small amounts of microplastics. If that applesauce is in like a squeezy plastic pouch, like for baby food, lots of microplastics. And so that's really like a shift in thinking. And so the packaging really does not impact the amount of microplastics that are in a food as much as how much it's processed.